I don't remember how old I was, but it was the first year I stopped for shopped for Christmas gifts on my own. My parents gave me some money and left, let me walk to a shopping area close to our house. I walked into a jewelry store and laid my coins on the counter. The clerk helped me pick out a costume jewelry pin and purple scarf for my mother. That Christmas, for the first time, I was as eager to see my mother open her gift as I was to open my own. Looking back, I'm thankful for the clerk who spent so much time helping me. I have also <coughs> had this thought. I could give my mother nothing that hadn't been given to she certainly could have bought for nicer things for herself. God, I remember my mama's yellow suit that she wore for 10 years, and uh, you know, it brought back lots of memories to me. Nevertheless, I think she was highly pleased to receive my gift. In the same way, we can give nothing to God that didn't come from God in the first place. All our possessions, all our power, all our talents and gifts from God. Nevertheless, I believe that God is pleased by what we give. <coughs> this is from the Upper Room, December 5th, and when you read it, Tucker's cousin <coughs> wrote it. So it was extra special to us, and we knew his mother and his daddy, and I could envision them uh, I could envision Drew being young and having such pleasure in this. I read a devotional this week as we approached Thanksgiving about not only, you know, lots of times we go around the table, what are you thankful for? And, you know, the kids say, my Xbox. Uh, you were supposed to have at least smiled. Uh, and then, <laughs> uh, but different things. And then this devotional pointed out but what have you given rather than what have you received? Boy, that set me to thinking. I thought about my grandmother's story. My grand I never knew her husband, my granddaddy. He was killed before mother and daddy, right before mother and daddy married. He was run over going to a church meeting, had major brain injury, never regained consciousness. Uh, a drunk ran over him, and she tells, told me the story of how, and I can just see her at that front window of her living room. She said, I had given away most of Glenn's uh, clothing because I knew there were those who needed it, but I held on to an overcoat. It was cold. Back in the days when hobos would mark a house where they knew they could get a meal or a little help. She had just fed a man and stood in that window and watched him shivering walking down the street. She said she heard granddaddy's voice as clearly as if he was standing at her shoulder saying her name was Irene, but he called her Reen. Reen, are you going to let that overcoat rot in the closet when that man is shivering with cold? She said she hesitated because it was one of the few things that she had kept of granddaddy's. But she went to the closet called to the man, he came back, went to the closet, got the overcoat, and gave it 
to a total stranger for him to ward off some of the cold. She said, I watched him with tears rolling down my face. I watched him walk down the sidewalk, huddled in Glenn's overcoat. The last thing she thought she really had of granddaddy's. I could not help also but think about my doctor here, Wyatt McNeil, who took me, I had had three miscarriages, and it was time for Laura Beth to be born. We went to the doctor's office. He said, Meryl, you're, you're in, what is it, labor now? I said, no, I'm not. I cleaned the bathroom before I came. I couldn't have done that. He said, yeah, it's all in your back. Doesn't it hurt? Yes, sir. I'm sending you to the hospital now. Laura Beth turned and put her butt down in the birth canal and would not move. At the time she did that, I thought I was going to birth her out my throat <laughs> instead because she raised up, hump, and never moved for about 10 days. Why well, came to the uh, hospital very quickly, and he said, we, we're going to have to do a C-section. No, no, no. Yeah, we're going to have to do a C-section. He knew I had lost three others. Why, well, I think you were just chicken. You weren't going to let me lose this one, thank God. And he said, but I've got to get an anesthesiologist. Well, the story goes that he went to the dining room, and he grabbed one by the arm and said, now, let's go now, I heard. Tall long thin drink of water he was. Why well, I still had him by the arm when he got to my room. They grabbed my bed themselves and took me to the delivery room and I'm saying, but I want to be awake. I want to be awake. Well, mm -mm, you're not going to be awake. And he took that precious child of mine out of my womb and at almost 45 years old in two weeks, she has been the absolute light of my life. It was a gift of love. He could have said, well, we'll, we'll give it until lunch is over or whatever. Whatever gift that we choose to give does not have to have a monetary value. We have different gifts and talents we have different gifts <coughs> to give, not just to receive. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the people who give of themselves. And between now and Thanksgiving and Christmas, see how many gifts each one of us can give. And we bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you so much for your gift, your gift of your son, who from his birth was headed to this horrible death. For without Easter, there is no Christmas because he died for our sins and he was resurrected. Oh Lord, thank you. Let us each find ways to give to others. Maybe they will recognize it, maybe they won't, but let us do this, Lord. Amen. <laughs> I, was a, I was a language major in college, French, Spanish, German, and uh, so I, 
when it came to New Testament Greek, I, I loved to run my own translations. And so uh, I would, uh, every, every day, for the, every Sunday for the gospel, I would run my own translation and, try, and, and make sense of the Greek. And, uh, but then I discovered the NIV. And I said, my goodness, these people are so good. Why am I laboring like this to, to, to run my own translations? Because they nailed it. I mean, they just nailed it. Well, the latest, the latest, and the most accurate, probably the most scholarly Bible, I can, I can show you for your home, for your own personal reading. It's heavy because you don't want to bring it to church. And that's, boy, this is really a, a tome. It's called the NIV Zondervan. Like the Zondervan NIV. How many of you have this Bible? Okay. Because of you. <laughs> uh, I want to introduce you to it because it's very, very scholarly. And you can move the microphone a little closer to you. Sorry. Move it a little closer to me. You should I turn it off? Is that on is that or is that off? Okay. Yeah, back on. Okay. So where was I? The <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you know, <clears throat> from someone who can, who uh, who loves. I see my my fellow Verdi lover lovers over there in the corner. Uh, he he loves those Verdi operas. <laughs> Anybody that can quote from him, but it's pretty good. <laughs> I had just read it that week, <laughs> and uh, so. Uh, <laughs> This this Bible I really recommend to you. Let me get let me give you an idea of the kind of uh, format it uses. The text runs in the brown is the commentary. It's the scholarly commentary. It's the best one volume thing I have ever seen put before uh, somebody who wants to read the Bible and really understand it. And, and be up on what's going on. So this translation was made in 2012, and as far as I know, it's the most recent one uh, that NIV has. So I want to encourage you to take a, to, if, if you need a Bible and you, you want a Bible to, uh, to refer to and to learn a lot from, uh, all you got to do is just read the text and then look down in the brown and you get the explanations. It's just, just, a, just an amazing thing. So I, I believe this morning we're going to take a look at Genesis 28. Um, I'm going to ask you a question um, so that as we read and as we uh, contemplate, um, we can do it together. Let's pray. Father, we're going to open your word this morning. And we want to thank you for your word. It is truly a, a light into our path. And uh, we want to thank you for it. Um, we want to also ask you to teach us by it. And at the same time, we want to thank you that you covered every need that we have from from the need for healing through the need for food and resources <coughs> we want to we know that you're able to provide those for us and so we we just uh, we welcome you here give you freedom among us and allow you to teach us in jesus name amen chapter 28 which is um verse 10 through 22. I'm going to read it to you from this Bible. And just take a listen to how, how smooth this translation is because it's a conservative Bible. It's, it is, a, um, it is all, but it is brilliantly done. Brilliant, brilliant. Joseph left Beersheba and set out for Haran. Or Jacob, I'm sorry, Jacob left Beersheba. 
And when he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord and he said, I am the God, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth. You will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Remember we talked one time about God's promises. They're very, very important. And I tell you, we'll come back to that. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. How many of you can identify with that? So you, you, all of a sudden, boom, there the, Lord, the, 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 the presence of the Lord just descends, and you just didn't expect it at all. Um, when Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called that place Bethel or as we know it, Bethel. Bethel, El meaning God. Um, and uh, I believe that Beth means uh, throne. Um, and um, <clears throat> he called that place Bethel through the city. Though the city, it used to be called Luz. And then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and watch over me on this journey I am taking, and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's household. Then the Lord will be my God. And this stone, which I have set up as a pillar, will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. Um, Jacob made a commitment to the Lord there to serve the Lord, the God of Abraham, and the God of his father Isaac. So commitments are very, very important. And uh, when we talk about promises, how many times do you think God uh, made the promise of the land, people, and of blessings to Abraham and his clan? How many times do you think it's recorded in the scripture? four or five times, over and over again. Because first of all, it didn't happen all of a sudden. It was a process of things that God guided very cleverly. Now, I want to ask you that as he guided this family, was he fair? Because let's look at it. Abraham's firstborn was Ishmael, because he had it with the concubine. Um, I believe that the Bible describes Ishmael as a wild donkey of a man. <laughs> so I'm just giving you an idea. <laughs> and then, and then, but, and so he was first born, and in that part of the world, the person who was born first got 50% of the inheritance, and who, whoever else was born later had to divide the rest. And of course, women didn't inherit, only men. So along came who after that? Isaac. Isaac after that. Now, 
Was it fair that Ishmael missed his uh, inheritance? Um, and then God chose to work through Isaac, didn't he? And who was uh, Abraham's wife? Sarah. Sarah. Sarah gave birth to Isaac. And then Isaac <laughs> went and he sought a bride. And what was her name? Rebecca. Rebecca, yeah. Rebecca. How many of you are, are, are scratching your head and saying, gosh, there's a lot of them to remember. <laughs> uh, and... <laughs> And uh, so, uh, when he gives, when, uh, when, um, and when uh, Rebecca gives birth, who, who is the first one born? Esau. It's almost like he saw. <laughs> Esau. He was a, describe Esau for us. What kind of guy was he? A rug outside. <laughs> He was a red-haired guy, red all, all over, right? And so, but to whom did the inheritance go? To, to the one who had his fingers on his heel when he came out of the womb, right? Right. And who was that? Jacob. Jacob. And then when Jacob, uh, when Jacob gave birth, uh, he, he married who? Rachel. Rachel. And when Rachel gave birth, um, um, she she couldn't she couldn't have children at first. So he he had uh, Jacob had children by Leah, her sister, right? Twelve of them. And so then, can you imagine this? Now the oldest Reuben did not inherit. Who inherited? So what famous son of Jacob inherited? Joseph. Joseph, the one who was what? Sold into slavery. And he had, a, but Rachel also gave another, uh, gave birth to one more son after all of this. And his name was what? Benjamin. And so as a result, Jacob and, uh, gave birth to the, the inheritance passed to Jacob, uh, to uh, Joseph. And then uh, we lose track of it from that point on because Genesis ends that, with that great saga. Uh, the last, from chapter 12 through God, it's chapter 15, you have the Abraham saga. I call it the Abraham saga. One of the best stories in the whole world. And it, I don't, I'm, I'm, I've had story writer after story writer comment that there is no better story than to read the, the story of Abraham and all the way through to the, its conclusion at the end of uh, Genesis. So let me ask you a question. Was God fair in the way that he, uh, the way that he established his family in Israel. No. Tell me more about that. Why wasn't he fair? God doesn't have to be fair because God's God. <laughs> God. He didn't follow the rules. Oh, but isn't it true that most people think God's going to be absolutely fair, right? Yeah. He's going to be absolutely fair. Um, how many of you previously thought that? God is not going to be absolutely fair. God has his own choice. He makes his own choice. And it, is God righteous? Yes, he's righteous. <clears throat> so even though he is not fair according to our human thinking, nonetheless, I mean, if he, if he were fair, he wouldn't save us by grace, would he? <laughs> So you have to think about that before you go too far and think God has to be fair. Well, God, God saves us by His grace. And so, as a result, uh, His righteousness exceeds His fairness, right? I mean, He, he thinks of the, the whole thing. So, 
question I have for you is to is uh, <clears throat> does God keep his promises? Yes, always. Well, tell me. How do you know that? How many of you have received a promise from God in your own in your own spirit? Elaine, can you share about that? Well, I, I've already told the story of when Cindy was, I was a young widow and Cindy was a little um, toddler and I, God did promise me that if I were a good mother and, that he would take care of me. As y'all know, I have never missed a meal. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else raised a hand up here. Well, when I was sick for so long, for the past <coughs> three years, I didn't hear his voice, but I knew that he was saying, hang in there, the doctors and I are going to take care of you. Yeah. You're going to have me. Yeah. I think uh, that God's promises. Now, how many of you know that uh, you ever heard of Martin Luther? Martin Luther's theology was simply the, the Paul's theology of the promises of God. All he did was to simply extract Paul's theology of the promises of God from the Bible and lay it out. And guess who? Uh, was strangely warmed by some stuff that Luther wrote. Guess who John Wesley is? The founder of Methodism. And John Wesley went to a Bible study on the Book of Romans at Aldersgate, and he felt his heart was strangely warmed. And so, but what was it, the study material that he was that they were studying when he felt his heart strangely warmed? It was Luther's commentary on the Book of Romans. John Wesley began to see things in more deeply in almost every level. But the promises of God are just an astonishing thing. Most people, when they read about a promise from the Bible, they just gloss over it. Well, it's a promise. How many of you made a promise when you got married? <laughs> what was it called? A vow. A vow. Uh, how many of you um, made a promise when you joined the church? How many of you made a, a promise when you bought something on credit? <laughs> well, God is a God of promises. And His promise is that all who believe are children of who? Children of God, but go way back on patriarchs. Children of Abraham. Because the blessing that comes through Abraham culminated in Christ Jesus, by whom we are saved by grace, and therefore we stand in, the, in faith, uh, as did uh, Abraham. And uh, we so, Paul boldly declares in the ninth chapter of the book of Romans that we are the legacy. You and I are the legacy of Abraham, because we have the faith of Abraham. Well, I don't know about you, but my goodness, that really, um, that really uh, uh, energizes me. <coughs> Turn to Romans chapter 4. I'm going to read from, from Paul's, um, Romans chapter 4. And we'll begin with uh, verse 16. I hope I got that right. <laughs> I'm uh, in the midst of moving. 
Elaine and I are in the midst of moving, and I couldn't find my Bible, and I couldn't even find my my text for today. Anne had to uh, Anne had to email them to me. <laughs> so if if I look a little bit Arab scare, I am. <laughs> we're we're moving about a mile away, by the way. It doesn't exactly. Let's start with <coughs> verse uh, 16. All of you ready? Yep. And this will finish my class this morning, unless you have questions. Therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace. See, we've already talked about that, grace. That's why God isn't fair. He saved the, the criminal next to him, didn't he? When, when Jesus was on the cross, today you shall be with me in paradise. Therefore the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace, and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only those who are of the law, but those who have faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed. The God who gives life to the dead, and calls into being things that were not. And that's a powerful verse. The God who gives life to the dead, and who calls into being things that were not. That's exactly what he does for us as we walk out the Christian life. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so became the father of many nations, just as it has been said of him, so shall your offspring be, meaning many. Without weakening in his faith, Abraham faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. That is why it is credited to him as righteousness. The words that was credited to him were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness, for us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely, it just gets right down to the bedrock of it. Um, it's a very move, to me that's a very moving scripture. I get a little bit emotional these days. Anybody else get emotional? <laughs> uh, I see an old movie, I get emotional too. <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much for this little expose <laughs> of uh, is God fair or righteous or um, and who shall be saved. So, uh, I hope all of you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, how many of you remember what Thanksgiving was all about? We've been around a while, haven't we? If we don't know, I'm not sure we're going to be able to explain it to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ray. And thank you, Marilyn. I've got some updates to our directory up here. Um, just correcting email addresses or an address. Um, and I'll have uh, Elaine and uh, their new address next week for your book. Uh, did anyone not receive information <coughs> about our Christmas party? Oh, I need a list. <laughs> 
We've got several members of our Sunday school out. Um, Janice was in, in the hospital again last week. She is home. I think she's doing better. Uh, Bill Hayworth was in the hospital again this week with, I believe it's cellulitis. That oh, no, they think it's the gout now. They think oh, it's gout now? No, he's gone back home. He's home. Okay. I oh. talked to Joyce last night. Okay. And Pat had her knee replaced this week, and she is doing well. She's home, mm -hmm. and Alan's waiting on her, and so is granddaughter. <laughs> um, Marilyn, did you have an announcement? Well, I hope you will pray for Tucker. He, uh, we came back from the mountains last Saturday, and halfway back, he started having to go to the bathroom, and he couldn't urinate. And we got a calf at the emergency room on Monday, and he is miserable. We cannot see a urologist until next Wednesday. Oh, we what? saw the most awesome PA on Wednesday last, and he was, he was just awesome. Boy, what a gift he is to that practice. And uh, I'm trying to remember what he said when he went out. He said something like, doctors treat and God heals. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing that, that he would say this publicly, you know, as he's leaving the room. But um, most probably he will be due to have a surgical process at some time, but my Lord. We've got Thanksgiving coming up, and I'm sure it's going to be the following week. And so we... Uh, he is miserable, but he sleeps in his in his chair, in his recliner because the bed is not comfortable at all. Uh, and so, just please pray, pray for some relief for him. He's trying to be positive and upbeat, but it's tough. It is tough, and it's tough for you to go through it with him. Okay. Bill had a stroke, um, a mini stroke on a Tuesday, and he's. As you see, he's doing okay, but he said they were sticking. One of the attendants was wheeling him down to get an MRI, and they were talking, and when he got there, he asked, the, the attendant asked, can I pray with you? And Bill said, I would love it. And said they said, he got down on his knees and prayed with Bill. Oh, wow. What hospital oh. was this? Baptist South. Yeah, oh my! Yes, that happened. But pray for Kinger. If you have a chance to pray for Bill, I think absolutely. We have many of our members that we need to keep in our prayers. And thank goodness for these wonderful medical people. Oh my goodness, how wonderful! Yes, yes, we. I had uh, two knees put in at the Mayo Clinic by Mary O'Connor. Mary O'Connor was, she's today, I think she's the dean of, of uh, Yale's uh, School of Medicine, but Mary O'Connor stopped both times and prayed with me herself. Oh, no. Both times. And she was just stupendous. But she was a physician in every way. Boy, we just got to praise God for people like that when we find them. Wonderful. Everybody, yes. I'll tell you one little, little story. The uh, night lady came in the emergency room when I was an intern. And she looked at me and she said, Dr. Jesus heals without the knife. <laughs> <laughs> and you said, I'm in, right? <laughs> uh, any other announcements for the class? Let's keep our classmates in our prayers this week. Happy Thanksgiving. Well, and I just want to remind everybody that your check will be your reservation for the Christmas party. So it's made payable to me so that I can pay the bill at the club. <laughs> and, you, and you need that by the 4th of December, right? They need to know by the 4th about how many are coming. And don't so forget your Christmas to the party. How much? 34 per person. Oh, right. If you don't have the announcement, I do have a copy of it here. Um, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Let's do something great for somebody else and be thankful for those that do for us.
Tom? Do you How's Sissy doing? Um, I don't know, but Sissy won't be here until the 1st of January. Well, yeah. she was at yeah. church last Sunday. Yeah, uh -huh. so I, I don't know, know anything, anything more than that. But we'll pray for Sissy also. Yes. Okay. Yes. Tom, leave us laughing. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see. What have I done? Yeah, I don't touch the mic. Most seniors never get enough exercise. In his wisdom, God decreed that the seniors become forgetful so they would have to search for their glasses, keys, and other things, thus doing more walking. And God looked down and saw that it was good. Then God saw that there was another need. In his wisdom, he made seniors lose coordination so they would drop things and requiring them to bend, stretch, and stretch. And God looked down and saw that it was good. Then God considered the function of bladders and decided seniors would have additional calls of nature require, requiring more trips to the bathroom, <laughs> thus providing more exercise. God looked down and saw that that was good. So if you find as you age that you are getting up and down more, remember it's God's will. It's all in your best interest even though you mutter under your breath. Mm -hmm nine important facts to remember as we all grow older. Death is the number one killer in the world. <laughs> Life is sexually transmitted. Good health is merely the slowest possible rate at which one can die. Men have two motivations, hunger and hanky-panky and they can't tell them apart. <laughs> if you see a gleam in their eyes, make him a sandwich. <laughs> 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 